In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, and our beloved congregation, those who are with us here in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray that you are always in good health and in good spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This blessed Sunday, the gospel of this holy Sunday is from the gospel of St. Luke, or according to St. Luke, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. St. Luke 14 and verses 1 to 14. The Lord Jesus Yeah, these little angels are cute, aren't they? I think we should let them preach next time. Um, the Lord Jesus spoke about healing someone who was sick on a Sabbath, and they complained about breaching the Sabbath being the day of God, being the law of God, that you should never do any work on a Sabbath according to the Old Testament law. So they went against the Lord Jesus and they were not happy about healing someone on a Sabbath. Till this very day, our beloved Jewish people follow the Old Testament only. They do not believe in Jesus Christ. They do believe that the Messiah will come, but this Messiah has not come yet according to their belief. Therefore, they still hold on to the law of Moses, the Torah, the Old Testament. And unfortunately, they took it in the literal sense where they believe till this very day Sabbath is the day of the Lord you should do absolutely nothing on this day if you work on a Saturday you are in breach of the law you are breaking God's law you are literally sinning but when the Lord Jesus came and he did come the true Messiah has already come over 2,000 years now. He will come, the Messiah will come, but again, not the first time. He will come again to judge the dead and the living. But the Lord Jesus came and he's, he wanted to elevate them from the literal sense and into the spiritual sense. And he was literally saying to them in the spiritual sense, I am the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not a day. The Sabbath is the Son of Man. The Sabbath is Jesus Christ himself. For in Christ Jesus, God rests. And God created everything in six days. And on the seventh, the Sabbath, he rested. God rests in his son in his son because his son the human side of Jesus Christ is perfect like God never thought of something wrong never did of anything of wrong origin Jesus the human is perfect as God in the sense only God never makes mistakes. This human Jesus never made a mistake, neither with thought nor with deed. In this, he is like God. So he said, I am the Sabbath. But obviously, it was extremely difficult for a society, for a culture, for humans that have got used to this kind of a belief for at least 1500 years. 
for them to change overnight after 1500 years of teachings and passing by their fathers to them the faith it was extremely difficult that's why the easiest way was for them to reject Jesus but for us Christians for us who believe in Jesus Christ our Lord and our God the true divine God revealed in the flesh he is Sabbath it's not a day therefore every single day is Sabbath when Jesus is your Lord and your Savior every single day you see Christ came to give us freedom when Christ came he took us above every day he elevated us beyond the days the weeks the months the years he said in me there is no limit in me there is no restriction in me there is no a specific day for you to come for God to have mercy on you in me any day any time all day long 365 days a year you come in my name my daddy will forgive you because of my precious blood that I shed on Calvary the cross and then he went on why did the Lord heal that man on a Sabbath because Luke 14 verse 1 says that the Lord Jesus entered a Pharisee's house oh. Pharisees you cannot swallow them you know when you eat something and he gets caught up here Pharisees are like that is there Pharisees in the Christian world yes plenty unfortunately there are Pharisees in the Christian world who is a Pharisee a Pharisee my beloved is the person that puts everything under the microscope every single thing has to be scanned has to go through CT scan and MRI everything from eating drinking washing your face washing your hands washing your clothes relax brother if God the true divine God is your Lord is your Savior what has washing the hand and the face and the clothes got to do with anything in fact it's cleanliness cleanliness is next to Godfreyness well you need to be clean because that's also an illustration of having faith but a Pharisee my beloved is what we call a religious person Christianity is not a religion in the sense of religion I always say this and I will always say this Christianity is not a religion in the sense of religion you go to all the religions in the world and you ask them how can I end up in a better place how can I guarantee for myself a better place than here they will all all the religions in the world Islamism Buddhism Hinduism Shintoism all the isms that unfortunately should have really been wasms they will tell you to end up somewhere good you must do this and this and this and this and this if you do not do all these things you'll end up somewhere very bad it's all about doing and if you don't do you'll end up in a wrong place in a bad place but to end up in a good place you must do the Lord Jesus came in John 15 5 says without me you cannot do anything without me you cannot do anything you see unless I am your Lord and Savior forget about doing anything good forget it don't ever say I have a good heart don't ever say I'm a nice person 
Don't ever say, I am good to my family, my neighbors, my cousins, my colleagues. This goodness only has one source and one source only. It is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Without Jesus, there is nothing good. He is the source of everything that is good. So if you've got a good heart, thank the Lord for it. If you are a nice person, thank the Lord for it. If you are kind, thank the Lord for it. If you are a helpful person and a helping hand, thank the Lord for it because it is the Lord's doing. None is of mine. It is everything the good God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he entered the Pharisee's house, the religious people. The religious people are very narrow-minded people, extremely narrow-minded. Everything under the microscope. Have you fasted? Have you prayed? Have you done this? Have you come? Have you gone? And then, then, then relax. I ask you a question. Do you ever think when it comes to breathing? Do you think about it? You just breathe. In fact, you don't even pay attention to it, isn't it? Why? Because it's to do with life. Breathing is to do with life. For as long as I'm breathing, I'm living. And since it's to do with life, you don't need to think about, shall I do it? Shall I not? How many times shall I breathe? Am I breathing too often? Or shall I just take it easy on myself? No, it just comes naturally because it's life. Life cannot be explained. It can only be lived. Life cannot be explained. It can only be lived. The Lord Jesus says, when it comes to me, when you want to have a relationship with me, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, unless I am, unless you make me your life, there is no relationship. Unless I, Jesus Christ, become your life, you cannot have a relationship. You cannot enter a relationship with me because I am life itself and I am the source and the giver of life. With me, you don't think. You just live. With me, you don't need to say, did I say good morning to him or not? Have I forgotten? Let me look at the checklist and start ticking the boxes. The Lord says, doesn't work. Did I pray? Did I fast? Oh, I ate meat on Friday. Oh, sorry, Lord, I forgot. No. When Jesus Christ becomes truly your life, it is natural. I don't need to think about breathing. I don't need to think about, did I say good morning to him? Because I did. The moment my eyes were opened through his grace, the first thing, good morning, daddy. Natural. We need to get to this level. Because once the Lord elevates us to this level, we are no longer Pharisees, literal people. You have no right, Jesus, to heal a sick man on a Sabbath. Excusez-moi. Are you the one who is suffering? This man has been suffering for years. He wants to be healed. He wants to be relieved. Who cares whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Who cares? All I want is to be healed. How dare you? You say to me, you can't be healed on Sabbath. Come tomorrow. The Lord said, I am the owner of the Sabbath. It was not the Son of Man who was made for Saturday, for the Sabbath, but it was the Sabbath that was made for the Son of Man, meaning the days are God's creation, and God created the days to serve us, not us serving the days. We are much greater than any day. 
God put the time, the days to serve us, not us serving them or being enslaved to any day. Therefore, in Christianity, there is no religion. Because it's not about you must do this and this and this and this and this. The Lord Jesus said, none of these you can do unless you have me in your heart. So what is Christianity? It's a belief in a person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what Christianity is, a belief in a person. You know why? Because Christianity is one word, love. All capital letters, L-O-V-E. Christianity is love. And love cannot exist in law. It can only exist between human beings. I cannot marry a rock, even though I wouldn't be surprised to see that happening in the very near future where they say my wife is a rock from as rock. Anything is possible nowadays. These cheeky, naughty little bambinos playing in the street. I cannot marry a plant. I cannot have a relationship with any other thing except another human that shares my nature. So love is only made possible when there is more than one person. And the only reason why I can love myself because I am not just one as in one unit. I am one in three and three in one because the one who made me in his image according to his likeness is also the triune God, Trinitarian, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one in essence, one in nature. God is one. But this one is not just one. He is one in three and three in one. Because does God exist? Yes. Is God wise? Yes. Is God living? Yes. The existence of God is the Father. The wisdom of God is the Son. And the life of God is the Holy Spirit. Is existence your brain? No. Is your brain your life? No. None of them are the same. But all of them are one. I exist, I am, in, I am an intelligent, and I have a life. But that does not make me three people. I'm one person. But this one, it is impossible for it to be just one. It is one in three, and three in one. Existence, wisdom, life. And that's why when there is more than, when there is two or more, love is made possible. So when it comes to relationships, there has to be two and more for love to be made possible. Man and woman, Adam and Eve, yes? I kill you. You don't go outside of this equation. It's Adam and Eve. All right? Anything else is nonsense. It's either Adam and Eve or it's nothing. Men and women come together love. Love, the first thing love gives is life. When the man and the woman get together, what do they produce? Life, a baby, <laughs> that's a life. What is the reason for life? Love. What is the source to everything? Love. The foundation to everything? Love. Therefore, God is love. But God is a life giver, but he is not love giver. He is love itself because he is the source to everything. When it comes to Jesus Christ, you need to love him. Since Christianity is a belief in a person, oh, it's another person. I am a person, he is a person. What happens when two people get together? Love is made possible. When I enter a relationship with Jesus Christ, that relationship made love to exist between the two of us. 
since it is love, there is no restrictions, there is no chains, there is no slavery. I do not have to do anything since it's based on love. However, when you say to me, Bishop, do I have to pray? I'll say no. Do I have to come to church? I'll say no to you. Do I have to fast? I'll say no. Do I have to do good things? I'll say no. Who told you you have to? There is no such thing in Christianity as I have to. But I'll ask you this in return. Do you love Jesus Christ of Nazareth? If you say to me willingly, yes, I do, then I'll say to you this. If you love the Lord, then you must come to church. If you love the Lord, then you need to read the Holy Bible. If you love the Lord, you need to pray, you need to fast, and you need to be good. It is the love that makes all these things possible. Coming to church, praying, fasting, doing good charitable deeds is the result of that love. It is not a must. But because I love you, I am willingly choosing to do it. Do you see the difference? Who is forced to do things? A slave, not the son. The son is free, but the slave has no choice. The slave does not choose to work. The master orders the slave to do things. But the son is asked to do things, not ordered. In a very simple analogy, what is the difference between a son and a slave? One thing, the slave works to be paid. The slave works to be paid. The son gets paid to work. I'll say it again. The slave works to be paid. The son gets paid, then he works. Because whatever the father's is, is the son's. I inherit my dad. I don't need to work to be paid my, by my dad. Because whatever my dad has is already mine. I don't need to work for it. He already gave it to me. By birth, I am the heir to the kingdom. By birth, I am the inheritor of the kingdom. By birth, Jesus Christ gave birth to me through the holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the true church of Christ. So Christ, through baptism, made me the Son of God. Whatever God has is mine. God is now my daddy. Whatever he has, it is mine. I don't need to work to earn it. It's already mine. But what do I do? Daddy spoils me. He pays me and he says, Son, go do and show me what you can do. So next time, you don't have to come to church to see this good-looking bishop, eh? Come on, where's your laughter? Mm, where's your smile? I'm good looking, yes? Am I? Oh. <laughs> I came to church because I chose to come. I'm not forced. Why? Because I am in a relationship with my sweetheart Jesus based on love. When you love someone, do you suffocate? For seeing them? Of course not. You breathe. You regain your oxygen when you see the ones you love. When you are with the one you love the most, do you ever look at the watch? Never ever. Why? Because you do not want the time to take you away from your sweetheart. Therefore, my advice to you, when you sit in the presence of the Lord, whether it be in the church, in the room at home, opening the Holy Bible, praying, don't ever look at the watch because you are in the presence of your love. He is the love of your life. And when you are with the love of your life, time does not exist. Poor Padre Pio, this good, good old Italian saint. Hmm? Padre Pio, they... They went against him, his own church. Eh, it's always the case. Politics, jealousy, eh, it's always the case. So they sent a complaint to the Vatican. They said, uh, Mr. Vatican, you have a monk priest that is in breach of your canon laws. 
What is it? His holy mass service is like Bishop Murray, three hours. That is non-existent in the Catholic Church. It is very short. It cannot be three hours. They, they said it's impossible. We don't have priests that celebrate mass for three hours. It's impossible. They said, send someone to check it out. Padre Pio is celebrating the Holy Mass according to the Latin order. And by the way, the Latin order is the true, true Orthodox liturgy. And when I say Orthodox, I don't talk, I'm not meaning like Orthodox as in, you know, Greeks, Russians, no, 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 or Coptics. I'm talking about Orthodox true faith, straight to the heart of Christ. That is Orthodoxy. Orthodoxa is a straight faith, no twist in it. So the Latin order, the priest faces the East like we do here. It's exactly the same. You know why? Because we all received it from one master, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Where did he come from? The East. So we are all Eastern. We are all Orthodox, my beloveds. Don't worry. On resurrection day, all of us are Orthodox and good looking like myself. Don't worry. So he faces the East. So his back is to the people. Not like the modern mass where the priest faces the congregation. No, the Latin order, the priest's back is to the people. Padre Pio is on the altar celebrating the Holy Mass. This delegate from the Vatican is standing right at the end of the church and he is talking in his heart, not with a loud voice, in his heart, he's whinging and he's puffing and he's looking at his watch and he's saying, come on, finish it off. Padre Pio was revealed to him. Padre Pio said, when you are in the presence of the Lord Jesus, you better not look at the watch. This is an intimist moment. This is honeymoon, Habibi. This is where I am with the Lord only, no one else. Don't disturb me. The love of my life is having a conversation with me. And when I sit with the love of my life, who cares who's around me? Who cares who's ne sitting next to me? Who cares who walked in and who walked out? Who cares what happens? The world is on fire. The world is in turmoil. Who cares? This moment, nothing, no one disturbs it. I'm focused on my heart, on the love of my heart, on Jesus the breath of my life. Christianity is love. And the Lord goes on, and I'll leave you with it. It's dangerous when I say that. I even get scared myself when I say that. <laughs> I remind my own self that I need to stop talking. <laughs> the Lord said, when you are invited to a wedding feast, don't go and sit right at the top in the high place. Sit right at the back. Because if you go yourself and sit right at the high place, the one who invited you will come to you and say, listen, this place is not yours. There is someone much more honored than you. This place is for him. And when you get up, you are put to shame in front of everyone and you'll sit right at the back. But he said, go sit at the back and let the one who invited you and the other person to come to you and you say, friend, why are you sitting at the back here? Elevate yourself, sit right at the top. You'll get up being honored, exalted in front of everyone. For the Lord continued and said, for he who exalts himself shall be humbled but he who humbles himself shall be exalted. The Lord is literally saying, if I am the love of your life, and if you believe that I am in you and you are in me, dwelling in one another, if you believe that I made you one in me and with me, therefore you need to understand and believe in this. Wherever you go, Jesus is with you. You are not alone. We are together. We are one. And since God made the two one, let no man separate. 
So Christ is the groom and I am the bride. The church is the bride of Christ. The bride and the groom have become one, one my beloved. So wherever you go, Jesus is with you. Therefore, the Lord says, do not seek places because places do not exist when Christ is with you. Wherever you sit, that place is number one. It is not the place that makes Jesus number one. It is the Lord who makes the place number one. So wherever you sit, it is number one since Jesus is with you. And this is exactly why the Lord Jesus, when he came to be born, he chose not a poor man's house. He chose a manger where animals dwell. Animals, not humans. He chose a manger to teach every single one of us this profound lesson. He said, I wasn't even born in a house. I was born where animals live. And look at it, Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem, you were so little. You were so unknown. You were so lost and put behind. But look at you now because the king jesus christ of nazareth was born in bethlehem from all corners four corners of the world people travel to bethlehem and they lick and eat the dust of bethlehem bethlehem has became number one because jesus was born there he's saying to all of us Do not be boastful about yourself, be humble. Do not be a show off, hide yourself and let Christ reveal you in his way, not your way. Those who seek attention, those who seek honor, those who seek glory, they reveal an ugly picture. But those who seek Humility, those who try to hide away and not be seen by no one, God will honor them here on earth and there in heaven. When you do something in the name of the Lord, do it in secret. Don't boost about it and say, I help this man. And I saved this soul and I built this church and I brought all these people to Jesus Christ and I did and I did you see linguistically speaking the word me 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 is the number one I did I built I went I saved I helped where is Jesus in the midst of all this nothing non-existent it is all about me no Lord you do everything I always say to the Lord, Lord, I'm your donkey. If you are to choose a transportation, a means of transportation, don't look for no Mercedes Benz. Don't look for no Lamborghini. Don't look for no V8s. They're not good for you, the V8s. Look for me, Lord, because I want to be that transportation of yours. And I know, Lord, you like to sit on a donkey because donkey speaks of humility. The horse speaks of pride. When the horse walks, the horse cannot walk unless it lifts its head up. Impossible for the horse to walk unless the head is up. The donkey cannot walk unless the head is lowered down. Donkey is not an idiot. Donkey has another characteristic that is a stubborn one, but donkey here is very smart because he knows how to be humble. So don't laugh at the donkey. Learn from the donkey. <laughs> Learn. Humility. Be humble. Let Christ be honored and revealed and glorified. Not you, not me because it's all about him it's nothing to do with us 
So don't fight over a place. And don't say, my brother took my seat. My brother, congratulations. The seat is yours, it's not mine. When your sister walks into your room and uses your perfume, that's fine. Uses your laptop, that's fine. You know what, at the end of the day, neither the room is mine, nor the laptop is mine, nor Chanel or Versace are mine. None of them are mine. This body is not mine. Nothing is mine because the moment the spirit leaves the body, then I'll realize none of them is mine. I own nothing. So don't fight over materialistic things. Fight for Christ and his love. Yes, I'll say to you, fight. When he doesn't talk to you today, fight for it. When he doesn't come and say hello to you, fight for it. But don't fight because so-and-so so walked by and didn't say hello, and then you'll say, I will never talk to them till death parts us. Man, relax. Who cares if they didn't say hello to you? Forgive, you go and say hello to them. It's okay. Somebody told you off, you go and say hello to them. Thank you for telling me off. Thank you for being so nice to me and with all these beautiful sweet words of sharp knives in my heart. Thank you for the sharp knives, my dear friend. I really enjoyed it thoroughly. You blasted me off. Wow, what a feeling, Toyota. You have to wait almost two years to get a Toyota nowadays. <laughs> Everything is on back order, thanks to China. No, no, not China, thanks to the coronavirus. <laughs> So-called coronavirus. Yeah. Anyway, the Lord Jesus needs to be this breath of my life. Just like I don't think about breathing, don't ever think about saying hello or not. It has to be natural. Natural, my beloved. Amen? Amen. Well, um, today, according to our church's calendar, is the end of the Apostles' Feast or fasting. See, after the Lord's fasting, we have the disciples fasting. It's another 40 days. <laughs> the Orthodox are somewhat complex, you know, <laughs> they're always fasting. So anyway, um, so today is the end of the fast, and it is the feast of the 12 apostles. And last Friday, two days ago, was the feast of the 70 apostles. The Lord Jesus, while on earth, chose 12 first, and then he chose 70 disciples next after them. So he chose 12 and 70. By the way, the name Mari, my name, which is in English, it's spelled M-A-R-I. It's, um, I, I enjoy it when I receive emails or messages. Hi, Mary, M-A-R-Y. I say, hello. I said, don't get me into trouble. I can't be Mary because Mary is too much uh, for me to even be worthy to kiss her sandals. I'm not worthy. Her sandals are much more clean and pure than me. So don't kill, call me Mary, please. I am the unworthy servant of my sweetheart, the queen and the gorgeous one, the mother of my God, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. So. I'm not even worthy of M-A-R-I, which is Mary, which is the, he was one of the 70 apostles, which the Lord himself chose, by the way. So the Lord chose the 70 and the 12. Now, this, one of the 70 is the name I carry. So this Mary was in the first century. After 21 centuries, another Mary came. Uh, that's a long time, isn't it? Very long time. So anyway, Saint Mary, or in Aramaic, Mary, 
um, he, he established more than 300 churches and monasteries around Baghdad by the end of the first century. By the end of the first century, he had established more than 300 churches and monasteries around Baghdad. By birth, he was Assyrian, Mesopotamia, Iraq. That's where he was from. So not all the disciples were Jews. They were Assyrians as well. His teacher was Mar Adday. Now Adday also another Assyrian. And I'll tell you this, I'll share with you this little story. Because also today is the feast of God. In, in Aramaic we call it Nusert El. Nusert El, El in Hebrew or Syriac means God. Nusert means the feast of God. And on the feast of God or Nuserdel, back in our country, we used to sprinkle water on one another. So very shortly, I'll come down and I'll sprinkle water on you, you know, just to celebrate this joyous, joyous feast. And the sprinkle of the water resembles the word of the Lord Jesus because water resembles the word of God. And when you sprinkle water on someone's face, what does it do? Number one, it wakes you up. And number two, without thinking about it or blinking your eyes, there is a huge smile on your face. You get startled with a big smile. The Lord, when the disciples were sent by the Lord to all four corners of it, they sprinkled the, new, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. They sprinkled the word of God on every human being those who received the word were startled and a huge smile was put on their face because by accepting the word they were saved salvation came and through salvation happiness and joy and hallelujah so i'll sprinkle water on you and gee man i'm looking forward to that <laughs> but the teacher of Mary was Adday. After the fall of the Assyrian or the Babylonian Empire, there was only one country left where the Assyrians lived, the Assyrian nation lived, and that was Urhei, Turkey, current Turkey now, Asia Minor. So that country remained for the Assyrian people. Now there was a king in that country called Abgar Okama. Abgar Okama had heard that there is a great teacher and a great healer and also the king of the Jews referred to has came to Israel and he's doing wondrous things and he is called the, the king of the Jews but his own people are denying him, rejecting him. So he picks up the pen and paper and the king of, the, of Urhei of the Assyrian nation writes a letter addressed to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now this king has never seen the Lord, only heard of him, but by hearing he believed. So he wrote a letter and he sent it with two people. They took it to the Lord Jesus. This letter is written in Aramaic, Syriac. The Lord replies to the king with his own handwriting in, in Syriac Aramaic. The Lord reads the letter of King Abgar Okama. He says, I've got an illness, but I've heard that you're a great healer. And I also heard that you're a king, but your own people don't want you. Well, you're a king, I'm a king. My country is open for you. My throne is your throne. Come and live as a king in my country. What a great faith accepted Jesus as king, yet he has never seen him. He said, my home is your home. My throne is your throne. My crown is your crown. Those two people who were sent by the king, Abgar, they were trying to draw the face of Christ, of the Lord Jesus. They tried so hard, was getting wrecked. Yet they were a great artist, but they couldn't do it. The Lord Jesus, being God, he knew. He took a cloth, he wiped it on his face, and his face got imprinted on that cloth. 
We call it the Mendelian of Urhei or Adessa. And I'll come to that. So the Lord Jesus took a cloth, he wiped it on his face, and it got imprinted in a blink of an eye. And he gave it to them. He said, take it back to your king. I know you've been trying so hard to paint me, but don't worry. I just wanted to, you know, show a bit of a sense of humor here. Look what I can do. Very easy. Then the Lord writes a letter, gives it to Adday. Adday, some claim that he was one of the 12. Some say he is one of the 70th. Regardless, chosen by the Lord Jesus. That's what matters. He gave the letter to his disciple Adday. He said, you take it to Abgar Okama. Why? Because Adday also spoke Aramaic. He was a Syrian. Same nationality. So he said, you go and you give him the letter and you say to him, if he believes in me and accepts me as his Lord and his God and his Savior, I will heal him through my servant. You pray on him and in my name he is healed on the spot. And he needs to be baptized and his entire nation to be baptized. Adday takes the letter, goes to Abgar Okama. He gives him the letter. Abgar Okama believes in Jesus Christ right there and then on the spot. Adday prays on him. He is healed in Jesus' mighty name on the spot. He was baptized and the entire nation were baptized. As a country, the first country ever in the entire world that was converted to Christianity was the Assyrian nation. As a country, not individuals. Individuals in Jerusalem, but as a nation together collectively, this only took place on a global level in the Assyrian nation, Urhei, current Turkey, and part of Iraq as well. The Lord said to him, I don't have the time to come to you. Why? Because it was the Passion Week. It was a few days left for the Lord to be crucified. He said, I don't have the time, but my servant, Adday, will grant you your wish. He got converted, and the whole nation got converted, and all became Christians. Um, Adday had a disciple, too. One of them was Mari, which I carry that name. Not worthy of it, of course, but it's the grace of the Lord. That's all I can say. I'm indebted to the Lord forever. It is their feast today, and it is the feast of God, the sprinkling of the water. So what, what I'll do, I'll ask from our beloved choir to sing a hymn or two while we are sprinkling the water on you. Is that okay? Yes? Very good. Can we have the water ready, please? I'm coming down, okay? Um, can we um, mind also the camera, please? <laughs> 